Man, for some people, the gospel is the best news on the planet, but for others, it's extremely offensive. And that's the way it should be. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on five truths on how the gospel can be offensive and why we as Christians are not doing a service to anybody by watering it down. Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Cook. I'm the director here at the Illinois Valley House of Prayer. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, make sure to subscribe below. Hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date whenever we release new content. Man, this has been a harsh reality for me as I have often faced the temptation of watering down the gospel so that I don't offend someone. But what I have really come to believe is that we are not supposed to try to make the gospel uh, super palatable for everyone and not offend anyone at all. But really, we're just supposed to bring about and teach the full counsel of God. And from there, we've got to let the Holy Spirit do his work. All right, let's jump on into truth number one. Uh, the Bible unites and the Bible Bible divides. This is just a true reality of the Word of God. And here in John 17, verse 14 through 17, it reads, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. This is Jesus speaking. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of them of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So here we see the gospel, the word of God, uh, and what it works out in the believer. What ends up happening when the believer uh, experiences true salvation and, and hears the word of God and continues to fill themselves with the word of God, they become sanctified. Uh, they draw near to God. Uh, they continue to cast off the old man and, and go further and further in the relationship with the Lord. But realize what Jesus says at the start of this verse. He talks about people actually hating the disciples because of the word. And so we have to realize that the word of God is going to be hated by some. That's just the way that it's going to be. And so instead of trying to water down the word of God to make it uh, more palatable and less offensive, that's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to preach the truth. Now, of course, we got to do it in love. We got to do it in a spirit of gentleness. We've got to do it in a way uh, that's not just really super combative. But at the same time, we can't dilute our message because we're afraid of how someone else is going to hear it. All right, so truth number two is what you win people with is what you win people to. Now, what I mean by that is that the message that you initially um, help someone come into the kingdom of God is probably going to be the message that they latch on to. So here's the danger of uh, sort of the seeker sensitive approach sometimes is that we can really just portray this um, amazing, beautiful experience and how your life's going to be so much better, you know, bigger house, nicer car, all these things. And I'm not against any of that. And, and there is truth. Obviously, when we come to know the Lord, he is the superior pleasure. So we actually set ourselves up to have far more joy in this life. But I think we got to make sure that we're telling the whole counsel of God. We got to share that, hey, there's also going to be a lot of difficulties. There's going to be people who don't like you. There's going to be situations that you're going to be faced with that are going to be really difficult. And so it's necessary to also be bringing that part of the message in because when persecution comes, when suffering comes, when anything that isn't just this kind of, you know, butterfly, rainbows, and unicorns lifestyle comes, they need to know like, hey, God hasn't forsaken them. Like, hey, this is part of being a Christian. This is part of coming to know the Lord. I heard a really good analogy. Uh, and, and what it was, was uh, when we're preaching just one side of the message uh, that stays pretty surfacey, doesn't get very deep, um, and just focuses on all the good things that happen uh, when we become a believer, it's almost like bringing sheep to AstroTurf. And so, you know, they see the AstroTurf and it is immaculate, perfect, looks amazing, but there's really nothing to eat. 
And so, you know, you take them over to a field, and it's going to look a lot rougher, but guess what? They're going to be eating something. And so I'm afraid that in a lot of our modern uh, preaching and a lot of our modern teaching, we're just kind of giving the AstroTurf message. We're staying really servicey, just kind of sharing how God's going to be able to help you get um, healthier, wealthier, better. Um, and I'm not against any of that. I want to keep, I want to keep, you know, making sure that I'm saying that those aren't wrong things, but it is, it's the emphasis that we're putting on them to the neglect of all the suffering that is brought about in the New Testament. You know, each book of the Bible in, in the New Testament has suffering mentioned in it. And so uh, we need to make sure that we are preaching and teaching a balanced message. If we don't do that, we're going to be at risk of what the writers of Hebrews says here in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. And so unfortunately, something that, that I've recognized in kind of this modern uh, Christian landscape is just a lot of people who are just on the milk of the word. They haven't dug into the meat. And so uh, my hope in, in saying this and kind of bringing this up is that we realize like, hey, there's more to this than just kind of the, the surface level message. Like, let's go deep in this stuff. Let's see what really the Bible says, what really God is calling us to be as believers. Truth number three is that Jesus was not afraid of offending people. Uh, I was listening to a sermon by one of my favorite teachers, Bill Johnson, uh, and he was calling this specific passage of scripture that I'm about to mention, uh, Jesus's church growth strategy. And you'll see why that's funny here in a second. So uh, turn with me to John chapter six, verse 53. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. So Jesus is, is saying this message in front of thousands of people. He has got this massive following right now. And guess what happens? People leave in droves because they didn't understand. They're thinking, okay, so you're saying we have to eat your flesh and drink your blood in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, in order to be saved. That makes no sense at all. You're crazy, I'm out. That was kind of the mindset and so many people left. You see, Jesus was not afraid of offending people's minds. And oftentimes he offends the mind to reveal the heart because the disciples actually did still stay with them. Uh, I forget exactly how it's worded, but Peter basically was like, where else are we going to find like the words of life? Where else are we going to find like what this life's all about? They knew that Jesus was the one and only way to eternal life and to true, true living. They'd experienced that through their relationship with him. And so they decided to say their heart was with him. And so there's going to be times in our relationship with the Lord where we don't completely understand why something's taking place, why it's happening this way. But because we know who he is, because we understand his character, because we recognize how much he loves us, we're able to say, you know what, Lord, I don't understand this circumstance, but I know who you are and I know that you have the best for me. And that's what keeps us in uh, that relationship. It's not fully understanding. Our minds may sometimes be offended, but as long as our heart is connected with him, we continue to stay in the relationship. Truth number four is that Satan actually has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Go ahead and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So what does this mean for us? 
All right, so going back to our starting point about the gospel being offensive, and that's actually the way that it should be, we have to recognize that the people who do not yet know the Lord, they have a veil over their eyes. Like, like they are truly blinded to the truth. And so I don't care how much you try to pretty up the gospel um, in order to be able to, you know, bring it before them and try to appeal to them. It's not going to do anything unless the veil is removed. And so I think what we need to be focusing far more on is preaching the truth, preaching the full gospel, uh, being so uh, concerned with, with preaching the full truth of God, and then letting the Spirit do His work. He's going to be the one that removes that veil so that, that they can then see the truth. If we continue to try to use every little tactic and, and technique to try to make this gospel really, really appealing to someone, I think that we're going to be in danger of actually preaching a message that may not be considered the gospel at all. So at the end of the day, there's two things that happen when the gospel is preached. It is either going to heap judgment onto someone or it's going to release them in this, into salvation. And there's a continuum there on as we continue to preach and share the love of God, you know, people's hearts uh, slowly beginning to turn to the Lord as well. But what I mean by it heaping judgment is that we are actually telling them how to save themselves, how they, well, how Jesus can save them, how they can unlock the key to the kingdom of heaven, how they can escape hell. We continue to share that message with them. So if they decide, hey, I'm not going to listen to that, they're just taking judgment upon themselves. But if we continue to say that to someone and, you know, the light bulb goes on, the Holy Spirit moves mightily upon their heart and they decide to open up their life to him, then that's going to release them into the greatest thing on the planet, which is salvation for our souls. Truth number five is that pleasing God always has to supersede pleasing man. Uh, a verse that I just have to constantly remind myself of is Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. For am I now seeking the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. This is Paul speaking right now, and he's saying, you know what? I, I gotta I gotta do what God's telling me to do. I gotta say what God's telling me to say, regardless of how you're gonna hear it. Uh, unfortunately, I think in a lot of our modern day churches, they've become very man-centered. Uh, we're not so focused on, on pleasing God 100%. We're wanting to make sure that, uh, you know, people like the service, that people like us, that our message is palatable. It's not offending anyone. You know, we wouldn't want anyone to leave or, or anything like that. And it's just like, are we really following this Galatians 1.10 principle of, of pleasing God, even if that means that some people aren't going to like us, even if that that means that some people are going to leave the church. Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to take a look in the description. We've got a ton of links to other videos that may interest you. Uh, we've got our free Keys to the Kingdom mini course that's available. If you want to click on a link down there, uh, you'll be able to sign up and enroll for that completely free. And, and as I said before, if you liked what you saw here, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, anytime we, we upload anything new here on YouTube, you will be notified and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it's released.